and uh, I, wa uh, we I want to, to give you an overview on the possibility of uh, mechanical, the, the availability of mechanical Set models uh, uh, for of, uh, historical modeling. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, let me recall, be. which is the Italian and the European laws that are uh, in, in Italy, the so-called, I, I also mentioned this, uh, uh, this law that is testo unico per le norme tecniche di costruzioni, to which are uh, associated the so-called linee guida, and I will show you some uh, basic concepts that are included in this uh, linee guida for the evaluation and reduction of seismic risk, as uh, seismic risk in our country, in Italy, is uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, point. And also this uh, law recalls the European codes that uh, uh, essentially are focused on the same, uh, on the same uh, topics. And uh, I don't rem I didn't remember that uh, this slide was in Italian, but I will translate for you. And uh, um, what is uh, very crucial in the recent uh, laws uh, is the possibility to focus attention on the correct structural modeling, which uh, takes into account uh, uh, the uh, nature of the uh, object of study. And in particular, we will, you, you will see that uh, also the law is uh, focused and distinguish, distinguishes uh, between deformable models and rigid models. And we will see what I mean uh, with this uh, definition. But uh, uh, I can anticipate that in the case of uh, deformable models, the focus uh, is uh, on the evaluation of the strength of materials. And uh, as we said uh, the last, in the last lesson, this kind of approach can be adopted for uh, cementitious measures uh, in which uh, the performance of the material is uh, uh, very uh, prominent. While we mean rigid models, uh, the models uh, in which uh, the essential point uh, is uh, the geometry and uh, the limit equilibrium. And we will study also by hand uh, with uh, some exercises uh, the um, possibility to evaluate simply evaluate the collapse loads and collapse mechanisms for systems made of rigid elements that interact among each other. And in this case, the focus is not on strength of material, but on the limit equilibrium that has uh, essentially a geometric uh, um, connotate. And the recent uh, Italian laws will reflect this point of view. And the law was changed, uh, changed after some important earthquakes on, of uh, 2005. And uh, these are the basic points of the so-called Line Guida. These Line Guida are also published on my website, but they are in Italian, and uh, I don't know if you can uh, read them, but the essential point uh, I will resume now for you is the knowledge of the, uh, of the construction of the uh, building. That means, uh, for instance, uh, to have to let the, the to focus uh, on the geometrical survey. That is the first step of uh, any investigation. So you have to describe the geometry 
of the, 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 the construction and in particular individuate the uh, crack patterns within uh, the, your, uh, your building. And then it is important to recognize, uh, if present, uh, the texture of the, of the measure, if uh, this measure is made of uh, uh, blocks uh, or bricks, and uh, the kind of textures, as we will see, uh, is strongly influence uh, the performance, the final performance of uh, the wool building. And uh, then another point that is uh, very important, uh, it's a two, this is very important, uh, is to consider different uh, approaches. And uh, you cannot trust to the results of uh, only one approach, as uh, this is uh, uh, full of uncertainties uh, and uh, it is better to compare the results uh, with different approaches uh, and uh, essentially with the survey and the experience uh, of uh, the direct uh, physical experience of the manufacturer. And uh, in particular, concerning the survey, the survey, in the survey, you must uh, individuate which are the, con the element constitute, the constitute, constituents uh, uh, of, the, um, of the whole uh, uh, construction and uh, the connections between the elements. So the survey must be uh, focused on the individuation of the texture, the size, and uh, uh, and the sector and the size of the of the measure. Uh, we also can uh, include uh, our uh, analysis within uh, the seismic uh, uh, laws uh, that in Italy are uh, important and uh, you will recognize uh, in which uh, zone uh, uh, zone the, the, the zones are divided uh, into uh, different level of risks and uh, you will recognize uh, in which zone we are included and then we can uh, adopt a method to identify the safety of uh, of the building. And uh, in particular, focusing on the kind of measure that I call uh, the block measure, it is very important to uh, individuate the so called rule of art. That means, uh, except of course for the concrete cement, uh, cementitious uh, measures, with the particular measure, with particular cohesive pro pro properties and for which the mechanical per structural performance uh, strongly depend on the material on the material only except for this kind of measures the historical measure can be reconducted to this category and you can remember the measures that we classified as strictly block measures but also, in Plecton, at, uh, in the Greek and the Latin manner, uh, in which we can recognize a rule uh, and, uh, that uh, allow us to compare the construction to blo a block, a regular block measure construction. And the ideal uh, uh, way of uh, um, uh, the, 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 the rule of art is uh, uh, realized by the so-called opus quadratum and uh, that uh, can be traced to the study of block measure and the opus quadratum is uh, the, the representation of the so-called rule of art. In uh, this kind of measures, uh, we can uh, uh, recognize that it is very important to take into account the shape, the size, 
and the disposition of the stones, <coughs> which play a decisive role uh, in the evaluation of the final uh, uh, performance. Another point that uh, is uh, very important to, to take into account is friction. Friction is the only material properties that, uh, in this case, uh, uh, has a very significant role, as we will see in the future. So the problem of brick block masonry can be described as a problem of uh, no tension and frictional contact among rigid bodies. This is because uh, along the interfaces, the, 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 block, the, the blocks are, are, can be considered rigid because they are uh, uh, strongly resistant in particular to compression, but the interfaces, the joints are weaker. And uh, along the interfaces, we can uh, uh, detect uh, the opening or also sliding. And sliding is uh, governed uh, by friction. It depends on the roughness of the surfaces uh, in uh, contact. So these are the basic steps of a structural analysis of a masonry building. And the first step is uh, the individuation of the so-called building rule. And the building rule is, uh, uh, we, we, we call the building rule the rule of art. Mark on the Sorry, just a moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 And uh, this is a slide in which I mean what, uh, which is uh, the uh, effect of the rule of art. And uh, you can see in the picture that is an irregular measure. And this is regular measure uh, is a very, uh, of a very poor quality and is schematized as uh, in the picture in, uh, on the right side. And uh, differently, this is an irregular measure uh, that is uh, realized using uh, a good uh, rule of extraction. And the ideal representation of this regular measure is uh, this one. Uh, could you see my mouse from the uh, from the from the house? Se io muovo il mouse, lo vedete, Blaian? Not me. No, non vedono. Loro lo vedono. Però è strano perché. Eh? No, dico se io indico col mouse, loro non vedono. So no. this is the picture on the right side of the slide. And the picture on the right side of the slide, you can see a measure that is not an opus quadratum, but is made of bricks that are uh, uh, disposed in a very good way. And the description, ideal description on the right side is uh, this, the same of uh, uh, measure with the uh, the higher level of uh, interlocking. So you can check that uh, on the left side, the case of uh, poor uh, misery with no interlocking among uh, stones collapse uh, as show, shown in the picture. While on the right side, we have a good measure with a good level of interlocking 
and the collapse is uh, on the right side the same of a monolith. This means a real of art. If masonry is uh, realized in a very uh, good way, the behavior is can be reconducted to have the behavior of a monolith. And this is the 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 the, the, the ideal condition. And uh, your survey must be focused on uh, uh, individuate, which is uh, the constructive, uh, the building rule, e in order to, to know if uh, the, the performance in terms of structural safety is good or not. And uh, in this case, you can also see that in the case of the measure of the right, the, the right side, we have the stones that we call the diatony that are interposed along the thickness and the, in the, 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 the colors we have you strongly depend on this, uh, the disposition of this kind of stones that are bonding stones called diatony. And these are other kinds of uh, misery. These are real measures that was uh, uh, the result of a survey made in a, in a site. Uh, in excuse me. That is uh, called, me. Uh, uh, that is. Uh, uh, I can't see the screen. In, the, in Sicily. And uh, on the left side, we have uh, a good measure that can be represented as in the picture on the top as a regular measure with a high level of interlocking. In the middle, we have a, a measure of uh, middle uh, uh, quality and no, 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 Ah no, bene. Questa non l'hanno vista? Cioè questa quando facevo questa non l'hanno mezzata? Ragazzi, però da casa parlate that you have to, to talk as I couldn't understand if you are following uh, the slides or not. Huh? E lo so, ma questa quindi non ho capito niente di questo. Giusto? Is there some, someone uh, who can uh, help me? But from home, uh, uh, Professor, uh, now we can see, but uh, if you can please uh, repeat. Could you say me something from home? Because I was talking to the people in the room, but uh, uh, I now realize that uh, you didn't uh, follow my slides. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, we didn't uh, see, but uh, now we see. And uh, if you please can repeat. Vladia, mi dici cosa hanno visto e capito? Perché non lo so veramente, non non si riesce a andare. But can you hear us, professor? No. Huh? Can you hear us? <clears throat> ah, okay. Because uh, one student was. Uh, Telling that she didn't see the last slides. But this slide, uh, did you follow no, no. the comments of this slide? No. It was stuck in another slide. Maybe if you don't. <laughs> Maybe if you don't uh, put in full screen, just keep it like this. Allora, I need that you switch on the cameras and uh, interact with me. 
Otherwise, I switch off my computer and perform the lessons all only in the room. Could you switch on your cameras? Interesting. Cioè, sarà inutile. Oh, finalmente. At last. Could you say me what you are able to, 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 to follow? Are you sleeping? Uh, professor, this slide, the last one, uh, if you can please repeat the explanation. Okay, which one? Uh, exactly that one. Vabbè, questa qua, sì, prego. Questo? I think that uh, they cannot see the full screen, so I cannot, I can use the screen not uh, in the full modality. Maybe it's good. Eh? Questa va bene, no? Okay, just to re, uh, repeat, uh, quickly repeat uh, the idea in this slide. Uh, the idea is the possibility of a good measure, a measure with a high level of interlocking to represent uh, a monolithic behavior. This is uh, the case of the measure on the right side of the wall, the slide, and uh, the case of uh, poor measure, that is the case uh, without interlocking, uh, is uh, the worst one. So the performance of measure is uh, strictly related to the presence of uh, bonding stones within the thickness, which realized the interlock. And these are three kinds of measures in which we have on the left side the sì, ma vedi che c'è il mouse, io lo vedo lì. On the left side you can see the good level of measure which realize the rule of art and the behaves as a monolithic uh, a monolithic wall. In the middle, we have uh, a measure of uh, medium level of uh, interlocking. And uh, on the right side is uh, another kind of measure, assembly, that is not uh, of uh, uh, good quality. And uh, these are the surveys of some real measure in uh, the center of Syracuse, that is a town in the Sicily. Ortigia is the name of this place. And I also uh, suggested you a book in the uh, program, which is uh, the, um, dedicated to the investigation that we performed some years ago in the uh, in this uh, very important uh, historical uh, uh, measure center that is uh, Ortigia in the center of Syracuse. So let me see, uh, we will be able to do some calculations and uh, convince uh, about this. On the left side, we have the measure that I defined the best one and this is uh, uh, and this is uh, the uh, the measure with the diatony that means uh, that is bonding stones uh, within the thickness this is the level uh, the, the 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 medium level uh, of uh, interlocking measure and this is uh, the low level of interlocking uh, Method. If you consider, maybe Marco last uh, week uh, showed you the behavior of uh, a monolithic block. 
let's represent the weight of this block with a force here called P uh, applied in the uh, wall center. And also consider an horizontal force here named F, which represents statically represents the effect of a seismic action. The seismic action is dynamic and uh, depends on the acceleration of the ground. But we can represent this action from a statical point of view without inertia forces, I mean. And uh, this force is proportional with a factor uh, that is uh, greater than um, zero to the self weight. And this is a body, horizontal body force. Okay, so P is the self weight and F is the horizontal. And by performing uh, some calculation, I will show you which, which model I used for these uh, calculations. We found that for the good interlocking measure, the horizontal force F is 0 0.245 uh, per the self weight. In the middle, we have 0 0.2, and in the worst case, we have 0 0.17. In the case of a monolithic blocks that Marco showed you uh, last, uh, last week, and the collapse load, this, sorry, the collapse coefficient, proportional coefficient of a monolith is the ratio between the, the thickness and the height, height of, the, of the wall. And in this case, this ratio is 0 0.25. So you can recognize that in the first case, 0 0.245 is quite similar to the collapse coefficient of the monolith. So the left side wall is uh, good Measure with a good level of interlocking, which behaves as a monolith. And this means rule of art. What we call rule of art. And this is another example in which we can see a measure with a good level. This is a wall with a good level of interlocking and in the left side, the coefficient of friction is uh, uh, the maximum possible. And uh, on the right side is uh, zero. Uh, between uh, the left and the right side, just change this uh, material property, that is the coefficient of friction. But what is important to, to recognize in this slide uh, see, for instance, uh, the, the right side uh, analysis uh, uh, in which the friction is not uh, uh, taken into account. So to simplify our uh, uh, observation. And uh, we can see that under a concentrated load, a localized load, if the, the wall is made of a good uh, interlocking, this can distribute the load. While in the case in which we, we don't have uh, uh, interlocking, the load cannot be distributed. And uh, in the next slide, we can see this uh, in terms of internal uh, stresses. Here on the left side, we have the wall uh, without level of interlocking. And you can see the, 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 the black rows uh, the, the represents uh, the distribution of uh, the stresses inside the wall. And on the right side, you can see the distribution of, uh, of the load that is allowed by the geometrical interlocking. So a good 
uh, wall is a, a wall made of uh, elements that are assembled together respecting uh, possibly the so-called rule of art. And you can uh, uh, assess the safety of a measure just uh, with a survey that uh, represents uh, this uh, situation. These are some uh, uh, different representation of distribution of the load that, of course, uh, will depend not only on the interlocking, uh, but uh, also on the size. Because the size of the walls, and I mean the size, the size of the bricks with respect to the size, the global size of the panel, of the wall, also has a very significant role. So, the first step was to even do individuation of the building role, the rule of art. The second step is the individuation of the state of conservation of cracking pattern, the state of conservation and of the cracking patterns. So when you have a measure, also the case in which a building is not made of uh, pieces of bricks or stones, you can recognize some uh, uh, cracks which defines the, the, the patterns and, for instance, represent the, 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 the parts that remains uh, um, with the internal cohesion as a rigid bodies. And, the crack, and along the crack patterns, you can consider the, 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 you can uh, represent these crack patterns as joints among rigid bodies. So also in uh, uh, measures uh, that are of uh, cementitious or concrete uh, uh, nature, we can also use uh, the description that uh, is uh, based on rigid bodies, interacting rigid bodies, uh, and detect the collapse mechanisms and collapse loads also in this case. Then you have to, of course, to individuate which are the actions on your structure that could be self-weight and external loading, additional vertical load, or also seismic actions that uh, are represented by horizontal loads, generally horizontal body loads. And another important thing is to detect if some settlements of the ground are present, as the cracking patterns often depends on the settlements of the basis of the the measure. And uh, to obtain a description of this kind, uh, you can use, uh, of course, a survey that uh, uh, we can call this uh, as a structural survey. Because uh, if the survey is uh, finalized to individuate crack patterns, we can uh, uh, denominate it uh, structural survey. But you can also uh, use uh, some documents and, uh, for instance, uh, you can see also in uh, all the uh, case studies of uh, other students of the, uh, the, the previous years uh, that they compared some uh, information about uh, the history of construction that can uh, help you in defining uh, the quality of the building, because it depends on the times, it depends on the kind of uh, construction of the surroundings. Uh, many, many information can help you in the analysis of the state of conservation of the building. And then, in case uh, when it's possible, if you have uh, some results of experimental analysis, uh, you can improve. Uh, your uh, 
description. After this, after this photography of the situation of uh, the building, you can, we can decide and define a model to assess the safety of our structure. So we can define the mechanical model, for instance, decide if the measure is of category block measure or concrete measure, and then select the proper computational models that are uh, useful to perform the structural check. And the structural check, let me repeat again, that uh, could be of the strength kind. You can define the, the strengths of the materials or to define the equilibrium. So the collapse loads and collapse mechanisms. These are two different approaches that, of course, can be uh, use it together and then the results can uh, be compared. After that, you can start uh, the uh, selection of the, uh, the ways of restoration of, uh, of your building. Uh, concerning the definition of uh, the mechanical model, concerning the definition of the mechanical model, uh, we can uh, grossly uh, distinguish between uh, the mechanical models for opus quadratum, that is for block measure or measures that can be reconducted to block measures, or the case of concrete measures, cementitious, continuous measures. So the first one, uh, you can also name these uh, uh, discontinuous measures made of blocks, and the other one, uh, continuous measure and in this case we can use as i said before uh, rigid models which uh, consider the limit equilibrium not the strength and uh, we can use this kind of models based on limit equilibrium for any kind of block measure uh, also reconduct, the, the reconducted to this, uh, the, and Blackton, uh, and so on. But, uh, as I said before, also for uh, measure with, uh, in which we recognize the crack patterns uh, and divide uh, some, uh, um, um, some uh, intrinsically uh, connected parts uh, and uh, uh, Discontinuity surfaces that are the surfaces of, uh, of cracks. Another possibility is to consider deformable models. And deformable models normally are used in so called continuum description that are, uh, that is better to. Um, that, uh, that are uh, uh, useful to describe the, ca the case of continuous measure. But which are the problems? In the case of uh, rigid models, the problem is only that we neglect the formability, but this is not a big problem. In the other case, as we will see, the deform deformable models, the problem is define a constitutive law that is uh, uh, that uh, can uh, be adopted for measure because measure is not linear and the possibility to to represent the real nonlinear behavior is affected by a high level of uncertainties. Moreover, it is uh, very complicated to define uh, non-linear constitutive laws. And the parameters that are involved, uh, as I said before, are affected by high level of uncertainties. And if you, in a mo model that is non-linear, consider 
Also, a small variation of the wide range of parameters, the results are incredibly different. So there is not, uh, um, it's not useful to, to, to adopt uh, complex models and which results are not, uh, are not safe are not deterministic. Uh, which are the features of a mechanical model for measuring? The features for a mechanical model for measuring are here resumed. First of all, as we said, the memory of the internal structure. That means the memory of the shape, of the size, and the texture of the world. And this is the first step that uh, the survey will, uh, um, will provide. The second uh, important uh, feature is, as I said, the constitutive model that is not non-linear. And we will see some kind of nonlinear behavior of uh, uh, interest, interesting, uh, uh, at least in uh, my uh, thought. The other feature that uh, plays a very important role is friction. Because uh, you will see that the quantity taken into account. Uh, uh, the presence of friction will affect, uh, strongly affect the results. And uh, if uh, in, in the past, uh, when the, um, for instance, a measure, a measure construction was uh, uh, designed uh, to consider the presence of uh, infinite friction, is, uh, is important uh, from a designing point of view. But uh, if the point of view is uh, the check, checking of the safety of a structure, uh, to take into account the presence of friction or not uh, is uh, important because uh, consider the possibility of slide between the blocks uh, is uh, and not uh, neglect, neglectable uh, uh, aspects. Concerning the models, I already said that we have models that are deformable models, uh, for which uh, we can perform uh, check on the resistance, on the strength, focusing on materials and the models which considers the limit equilibrium for which we will, uh, we will uh, check the limit equilibrium. Oh, these are an overview of the kind of modeling approaches, approaches present in the literature. And uh, let's focus uh, on uh, this one. This uh, approach is, uh, can be named macromechanical model. Macromechanical model means to use uh, simplified models uh, to describe uh, a structure. And, uh, this is a case of a macromechanical model in which you can see in this slide the building is represented using a finite element formulation. Do you know which are finite element codes? These are some commercial codes to, for performing any kind of structural analysis that are also used for measuring as well as for any other kind of 
uh, materials uh, which uh, constitute uh, the building and this is uh, uh, an example of uh, a discretization of a structure this is the section of a church in which uh, the, of course the measure is continuous and uh, this continuous body is discretized into a number of pieces and this number of pieces is a number of uh, uh, so-called finite elements and these uh, finite elements are connected through some points that are called the nodes and uh, the governing equation of the problem that uh, can be reconducted to compatibility equations uh, equilibrium equations are valid only uh, into the nodes so the problem uh, of the, uh, the equilibrium and uh, uh, compatibility uh, and compatibility of a continuum that uh, is governed by differential equations can be reconducted to a problem <coughs> of the equilibrium of a number of finite elements and is uh, an algebraic problem that can be used, uh, can be solved using uh, commercial uh, computational codes. These codes are named the finite elements, finite elements code. This is an approximate solution of the problem, but is, uh, uh, is uh, quite refined and depends, of course, uh, on the size of the meshes, the size of the elements. So the discretization is the core of this uh, procedure. How can we represent uh, our structure by using uh, some, uh, a number of finite elements? How many finite elements uh, are needed to have uh, a solution that uh, appro well approximates the exact solution, that is the solution of the differential problem? This is the core of, of a finite element uh, uh, approach and we have a wide range of uh, computational codes that can be used to the same and uh, in the case of measuring the key point uh, is that uh, we need to use a code in which the uh, constitutive law is not linear and when we use uh, some refined, uh, sophisticated uh, computational codes for performing a structural analysis, uh, we have to select the constitutive laws that are, uh, that, uh, that are very difficult to be defined because they depend on the parameters, and the parameters are many. And the variation of these parameters imply a uh, significant variation of the solution. So it's a very hard task because uh, of the uncertainty of the, of the uh, original idea. But we have the, one of the most uh, <laughs> expertise uh, in this matter. And uh, there are a lot of computational codes that uh, if you are uh, interested uh, in a uh, Applying this, uh, of course, we can uh, uh, we can help in uh, this. Uh, maybe we can improve uh, this kind. Uh, the standard ones, uh, uh, one of the most uh, diffused is the SAP SAP code, and uh, in the case of nonlinear uh, paper, we have uh, Abacus. Uh, and ANSYS uh, and uh, many other codes. But uh, if, one, if one of you is interested, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we appreciate because uh, we, can, uh, um, we can compare solutions obtained with this kind of approaches and uh, 
the solution obtained using some simplified approach that I will show you. So this is uh, the so-called. Uh -huh. Sì, solo io, I cannot understand with the mask. This is a problem. Yes, of course. This is the, the solution of a, a finite element computational codes in which the elements are described by the... Uh, there are some library elements and the, in this case, the library elements is... Uh, um, no, because in this uh, slide, uh, these are standard elements. We also have in this the codes that I mentioned before, the in the library, the brick element. And the brick element uh, has inside a non-linear uh, a non-linear uh, constitutive uh, uh, law. But uh, the ones that I show here are the standard ones in which the elements are solid elements with the linear elastic uh, uh, laws. This is the most used approaches, but I will show you uh, right now that these are very unacceptable results because measure is not linear elastic and the solution is not valid. It is better to don't perform calculations with respect to perform finite element calculations with the linear finite element codes. But if you want to use some refined codes in which the non-linear behavior can be uh, included, this is possible to do. It's uh, a little bit difficult, but it's uh, more realistic. Oh, these are other linear elastic models. I will show you which are the uh, problems of the linear elastic approach. And uh, this is uh, represented in a book, uh, Italian book uh, that is very uh, known and uh, diffused, that is the Manuale del Consolidamento uh, di Paolo Rocchi. And these are some elastic uh, analysis of a uh, measure rebuilding uh, in th this particular case uh, is uh, uh, the tower of Nocera Umbra. It's a building uh, in uh, uh, the center of Italy, a very seismic uh, site, a, a, a site of uh, high level of uh, seismicity. And you can see that these are some results of the static analysis and uh, by colors are represented state of stress but in measuring we don't know which is the stress because the stress cannot be defined as in other materials uh, as iron uh, uh, or uh, other kind of ideal materials stress uh, as, uh, must be defined in a very refined way so if you find that this, uh, for this attention in a portion, this is not uh, really true. And I will show why. Moreover, you can see the results. These are the results of a dynamical analysis. But this is not a building made of uh, steel. And uh, a tower, a tower, a measuring tower made of, uh, in that case, a very incoherent uh, measuring cannot be had as uh, a skyscraper in, uh, made of steel or uh, reinforced concrete. It's not possible. So these are analysis that they has, have not any uh, meaning. Just to do, just to perform some colored uh, uh, calculations to, 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 to leave to the uh, offices for having some uh, authorizations, but uh, this is not true. Measure is not steel, measure is not uh, reinforced concrete, measure is measure. And the modeling of measure must be finalized to 
detect the real behavior. Otherwise, it's better just to have a survey and to have a qualitative information about uh, the, 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 the outcome. That is much better that perform uh, not uh, realistic uh, computations. And uh, to demonstrate this, I want to show you a solution that was uh, proposed by Alberto Castigliano. So Alberto Castigliano, maybe some of, one of you knows, uh, I don't know if you <laughs> also at home. Vladia, tu conosci Alberto Castigliano? Ha studiato? Sì, ma no. Eh? Un po' di più dalle tue lezioni. Did you study at school? Uh, uh, ah, sì, sì, sì. The theorem of Castellani, yeah, the okay. so theorem. So, if you start, if you uh, follow uh, a course of uh, theory of elasticity, one of the most uh, important results of the theory of elasticity are the theorems of uh, Alberto Castigliano. And this was uh, theorems for, with which uh, we can solve uh, hyperstatic problems. Uh, and historically, this was uh, the, among uh, the first formulations, uh, um, um, the, most, the, 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 the first formulations uh, produced uh, in the literature. So Alberto Castigliano was uh, one of the most important uh, scholar of the theory of elasticity. But when he had to perform an analysis of, of a measuring bridge, he recognized that the theory of elasticity fails. So the most important scholar, at least in, Ita in Italy, of the theory of elasticity was the first who recognized the unicity and the singularity of the problem of measuring. And uh, he proposed a method that is, that, uh, is very clever. And I want to show you also in details, but now just to, to have an idea, I, I want to show you which is uh, the hypothesis uh, uh, that Castigliano uh, proposed. And uh, note that the proposal, uh, proposal of Castigliano is uh, the origin of uh, any kind of uh, nonlinear approach for method. So it's uh, the origins uh, of the nonlinearity of the behavior of uh, measure. And this is the idea. Let's consider the section of a, uh, an arch bridge between uh, real elements uh, that uh, could be uh, blocks, uh, um, block stones or discretized stones in a continuous measure. So consider the cross section and look at the cross section. This is the distribution, the linear distribution of the stresses in the section using the so-called Navier solution. Did you know, do you know the Navier solution, sigma is, uh, et cetera? It's a linear solution. And this is uh, the central, this is a rectangular cross-section, for instance, and this is uh, the region uh, named the central core of inertia. In Italiano si dice nocciolo centrale di inertia. It's a geometric, uh, a geometric figure that can be uh, can be constructed for any uh, geom geometry of sections. So, consider a distribution, linear distribution, and consider the so-called neutral axis, in which you have the vanishing of the stresses. What does it mean? 
This means that the session is uh, partialized and, uh, of course, so divided in a part that is in compression and another part that is in tension. In that case, for instance, this is uh, C, is uh, the pressure center. It's the point in which uh, the uh, upper uh, block interact with the, the lower. So, as measuring cannot support tension, he decided to remove the portion that is in tension and start an iterative process in which, for the second step, for instance, we have the same position of the external load, but a different position of the neutral axis, that is the axis along which we have the vanishing of the stresses. Then he removed this portion. And then this is a convergent solution, as in this case, you can see that uh, the, 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 um, the center of pressure is on the uh, boundary of the inertia core. The inertia, re the, the region, uh, inertial core, uh, come si chiama? Uh, inertial core region. Uh, maybe you remember from the theory of elasticity that this uh, region, that is called the inertial core, is uh, construction, constructed by considering the, act, the neutral axis uh, tangent to the original section. So, if uh, we are in this uh, uh, situation, we have that the section Mm, does not par partialize. The section is uh, all compressed, of course, if the force is of compression. So, this is the convergence case. And uh, he stopped and passed to the other section of the arch. <clears throat> This is uh, an iterative process uh, that uh, he performed by hand and uh, that uh, we reproduced with a computational uh, program and applied to some uh, uh, cases. I will show only this case in which we wanted to investigate the behavior of a portion of the Colosseum. And the portion of the Colosseum is this one. That is the connection between, this is the external, external line made of uh, blocks, uh, travertino. And the internal, that is uh, this one, and it's made uh, by bricks. It's a different kind of uh, measure. And uh, there was a restoration uh, intervention in 1845 by Salvi and Canina that was engineers uh, who wanted to assess the safety of the seismic safety of the Colosseum that uh, interposed some chains between the two uh, the two the two walls and uh, we use it the solution, this is a survey, a very accurate survey that uh, my colleagues uh, Maria Lanni performed. And this was the solution. And let me show the solution that uh, we found. Uh, this uh, on the, the right side of this slide at uh, the bottom is represented a finite element mesh for the solution, let me see elastic. The first step solution is elastic, linear elastic, and the Navier formulas holds. And uh, 
this is the line which connects the forces inside the structure and uh, the so-called truss line. And you can see that in the case of elastic solution, the truss line is always external. So this is a, a not realistic solution. The first step is a linear elastic solution that is not acceptable because all the portion of the older structure uh, means that all the structure is in tension. This is not true because Colosseum is one of the most solid uh, uh, buildings of the world and uh, supported a lot of earthquakes. Uh, we hope that uh, it remains uh, uh, forever. Anyway, by applying the process of Castigliano, the iterative process of Castigliano, of course, we perform it uh, uh, in house uh, code to perform these calculations not by hand. And we found, consider this uh, graphic of convergence, one, two, three, n steps, in which we found that the truss line is always internal to the, 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 the thickness. This is the final solution in which we don't have more tension. So in this slide, the portion that are represented in black are the portion in tension, but the other portion are compressed. So the aim of the Castigliano solution is to find uh, the real port, the real resistant portion of uh, uh, measuring structure because uh, is, uh, it is uh, uh, in all parts compressed. So when you have a measure, you don't know which is the stress. And if you said uh, these are uh, intention, this is not true. Let uh, me stress that on the uh, left side of this light, we have this, uh, the, the solution for the sum of a finite element uh, code with the only linear elastic uh, behavior. On the right side, we have the final solution in which the behavior is nonlinear elastic. These are some kind of nonlinear elastic codes that are implemented. Nonlinear elastic laws are implemented within the finite element codes, commercial finite element codes. And also in this graph, uh, you can uh, see that we have uh, in the uh, abscissas uh, the deformations and uh, uh, in the vertical um, axis uh, are the stresses and this is uh, the nonlinear behavior, the, the constitutive flow that is uh, intrinsic in uh, implemented in the code. You can see that the compressive behavior that is uh, in this part of the diagram is extremely different uh, from the tension behavior. And the parameters that define the strength and compression, the uh, elastic, the, 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 um, uh, longitudinal uh, elastic modulus uh, in uh, compression, and the um, parameter of uh, um, tension resistance and so on are a lot of parameters that uh, strongly affect the solution. So in a nonlinear uh, in a nonlinear modeling, uh, there are some many, many, many parameters to define and uh, often the solution strongly depend from this. So it's a very difficult, uh, difficult task. And this is uh, the case analyzed by one of my colleagues uh, some years ago. 
this is a church in Sicily, in Catania, San Nicolò Larena, in which uh, this is the survey of the church, and this is uh, the portion analyzed for which he compared a finite element solution with a non-linear code. with some other kinds of solutions that I will show, uh, that I will show in uh, the following. Um, to conclude uh, this part of macromechanical models, I want uh, just to mention all, also some uh, uh, approaches that are uh, uh, diffused and used by professionals. And this code is named, uh, io non lo so se questo esiste in letteratura anglosassone, questa tipologia di, di modelli, is a frame equivalent models. These, uh, these are models in which the misery is represented by these are the gray parts are considered as rigid and the red part as deformable and simplified uh, and the behavior is uh, simplified uh, with uh, mm, some uh, uh, structural elements and uh, these are the codes that are uh, used uh, uh, as i said in uh, in the practice, the code are not linear, but what is very difficult to, um, to, to validate is the behavior of these gray parts as a rigid, as it depends on the way in which a measure is constructed. And if, for instance, we have some settlement, I will show you also some results. Uh, this is this behavior of these parts uh, are not really rigid. So also this kind of simplified models uh, presents uh, many, uh, present some criticism. So the models of elastic, uh, the, the, the finite element models are, the results are not, uh, not always uh, uh, realistic. In this case, uh, there are some cases in which we can use uh, this kind of simplified models, but these are not general. And uh, finally, I want to focus on so-called micromechanical models, but I think that it's better to have a short step before entering in this, because it's an interesting uh, uh, way of uh, doing, and I need uh, your attention. So, uh, we are, uh, let me start again at uh, four o'clock. Uh, Bledian. Hi, Bledian. Hi, Bledian. Hi. I was thinking uh, while uh, remembering this uh, lesson to the possibility to, to implement again the Castiglianos uh, solution. What do Hi. you think about it? In a code, huh? to uh, develop uh, another code. Yes, uh, for instance, uh, for a simple uh, structure like an arch. Okay. And the results that I showed with was uh, by from my very old uh, Fortran code. I don't know if I have again. Uh, but the code was based on this idea, uh, finite element solution, then checking on the cross sections 
of the position of the nevral axis and removing uh, the uh, parts uh, in tension. And uh, the, the ones that I show in the Colosseum, this uh, was, uh, these uh, this were uh, shell elements uh, on the arch. And then I use it to check uh, in each cross section and uh, remove uh, the portion in tension. It's not very, very complicated, but uh, it's interesting because uh, um, I will show you also some other uh, simple cases. Uh, in which he analyzed the uh, arches in the next lessons. Okay. I, I was trying to find, even last year, when you showed this method, I was trying to find the, the paper where he, or the book where he used this. Like, when I can only find the, the, his energetic uh, theorem of elasticity. Unfortunately, I have no papers because uh, this was a time in which uh, we are not used to, to write papers. Yeah. <laughs> it was many, many years ago. But uh, I have some uh, parts uh, written uh, in uh, not published documents. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not published. But also this uh, paper on the Colosseum can be uh, user to have a look uh, and this paper is on the website okay. also in this uh, framework of uh, structural methodology is uh, in Italian and this uh, Castigliano solution for the Colosseum yeah. but just to have an idea of the process yeah for sure I think I, I ran across a PhD thesis who was doing something not exactly like this, but very similar. No, no, or, PhD thesis, no. I didn't use uh, the... I used uh, the <laughs> Castigliano solution in a master degree thesis. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not uh, on... Uh, I don't have... Uh, uh, online version of PDF, I have uh, only uh, Cartaceous version. Yeah. But uh, if, you, if you are interested in this uh, approach, uh, you can find some other uh, paper, maybe uh, by some people from Florence uh, who use the same approach, people Silvia Briccoli Bati, maybe she uh, published uh, something uh, many years ago, consider 80s, 80s, about 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can check. Francesco Marco ha fatto un codicino simpatico su, sugli altri. 
macchie e calcola una slide. È quello che facevo, cioè io praticamente questa cosa, poi il primo programma che ho fatto era per la tesi... Eh? Mi piace lo scrivere di Francesco. La tesi di laurea, la mia tesi di laurea che te la posso dare, io feci il suo programma in Fortran che faceva il calcolo della linea di pressioni e, e quel, tutti quei, quei cosi che ho fatto che vedi che metto pure qui, sono tutti fatti con quel, per mi ricordo che facevo i disegni col plot e avevo fatto un programma che mi disegnava col plot però il programma è talmente semplice che, che si può diciamo riprodurre su un arco ed è, è veramente interessante ma è questo qua per esempio che c'è ma io perché non scrivevo Marco guarda che c'è un sacco di materiale pure questo del Colosseo era interessante perché poi alla fine dimensionavamo le catene del canina, abbiamo fatto le, le analisi pure con le forze orizzontali. Quello vedi, ho preso uno shell così. Eccoli. Questa. Questo lo facevo a um, Ansys. Ah no, ma questa è proprio un sap, perché questa era lineare. Ma era proprio un sap, cioè gli elementi di shell sulla volta. E... Questo vabbè la metti in BIM e su questi qua mi facevo il check sulle sezioni e il check era questo. E magari ce l'ho, ma magari ce l'ho, c'è presente queste cose che sono sulle schede perforate. Eh? Però siccome sono una cosa veramente di grande attualità, eh? Che viene anche da una sullo così didattiche eh, il certo. sito che prendono un sacco io vedo l'ho visto anch'io effettivamente c'è la ragione di usare il sito che c'è Francesco cioè il sito il canale Facebook per il corso di staccio non so che cosa un sacco di visitatori lui pubblica tutte queste cose cioè, anche semplici eh. ok eh. mitico Francesco la possiamo mettere qua oh. sai che secondo me possiamo anche Mi fare magari qualche una cosa con con un non lineare se, se uno invece di fargli fare la di limite pure nel laboratorio dopo no? Sì, sì, sì. E gli facciamo fare dei calcoli con uh, i codici io adesso ti metto sulla cartella tutte le lezioni dell'anno scorso così vedi e vediamo di, di, diciamo, sì. di aggiustare il programma magari ci mettiamo delle cose nuove sì 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 Certo, questi diciamo sono delle lezioni generali sulla panoramica dei modelli, però quando è finito questo facciamo... Ma carina, tutte cose carine. Ma invece Nella che aveva preparato? Vediamo. Vediamo ha preparato, mi sembra, un paio di triliti, ci dovrebbe sentire, no? Ci sente? Melania, ci senti? Yes. Dicevo, quelli esercizi che hai preparato tu, come erano? Dove? Eh, non ho detto più, perché... Uh, a couple of uh, example for these courses. I don't know if there, is, there are two... Right, three ones. Yes. The, the spreadsheet. Eh, bisogna prima fare un po' di analisi teoriche su PC per lavori virtuali. Sì. Ma io questo è un po' per correre la lunghi prossimo vengo io, faccio una bella lezione lunga, e faccio, faccio un'introduzione in cina sui vettori. Poi devo fare porto scrap, porto fungale, poi faccio sui sistemi rigidi sì però siccome queste qui effettivamente hanno diciamo una, una origine io mi metterei un attimo insieme adesso a guardare i, la sequenza perché io ho fatto tutte le lezioni di diciamo di preparazione con modelli eccetera e poi comunque partivo partendo dal primo blocco però 
secondo me conviene seguire quello dell'Enea eh, mi servono gli appunti quindi magari ci vediamo un attimo da me eh, sì, sì, no, cioè, io almeno... e, e decidiamo sulla base di, di, diciamo, di quella sequenza vediamo dove possiamo intervenire pure per fare qualcosa di diverso secondo me un po' di dinamica possiamo sì, sì, fare quella, 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 però quella, cerchiamo quella. di capire su, sul percorso dove e quando collega, collocarci Mo, scusami oggi io adesso ho ancora un'altra mezz'oretta del quarti d'ora quindi mo sono le quattro diciamo che finisco alle quattro e mezza cinque meno un quarto ce le guardiamo anche un attimino subito ah Oh, vabbè, ci vediamo. Sì, 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 ce l'ho, ce l'ho. Ma tu dici così. che la andiamo via? Ma sì, alla fine loro sono di fatti così, però non so più. Cioè... Vabbè, però se fai degli esercizi. Vabbè, ma vediamo no, prima quello che c'è da fare, perché io, mo, effettivamente, questa storia del ricorso non ho mai nemmeno dedicato tempo a... Per esempio, queste slide, non me ne accorto, sono quasi tutte in italiano. Oh, vabbè, lascio così, eh la spiegazione di quelle sulle traduzioni si capisce sì l'unica cosa mi è rimasta la prima slide non so perché era quella che ha corso di Ciampoli <ride> devo dare viste la stessa slide come mai cioè, così si vedono in full, full screen qualcuno non si vede tutto Vabbè, ah però effettivamente uno non lo mette in full screen, questo problema non si può. Sì, sì, sì. Perché col sì, PowerPoint è uguale, se sul PowerPoint non lo vedono. Col PowerPoint magari è eh, sì. Perché se, è se fai presentazione non lo vedono, se fai quell'altra sì. Allora, a quel punto. Sì, sì. Vabbè, ma ora ce lo guardiamo un attimo. Sì. Io volevo farmi anche uh, qualche programmino studio su The San Melano. No. Sulle sezioni, pressione, pressione rapida. Cioè uno... Ma mettiamo sul sito. sito? Perché io non ce l'ho il sito su Facebook. Eh no, quello mi cercava. No, ma proprio anche per gli studenti, perché poi ne so, da, da materiale didattico, dove hanno il programmino magari per fare check dell'esercizio, per i locali. Eh, secondo me quello sarebbe utilissimo. Eh, quella cosa lì sono carine, cioè loro piace. Però vabbè, diciamo, come c'è il tanto, Sì, invece queste, vabbè, come dici, della, dell'articolo, siete andati avanti? Mentre eh. io so. Sì, sì, anche anch'io sono rimasto mezzo eh, ho, ho finito praticamente di fare le figure, quindi ci siamo quasi. Una settimana faccio conto che vabbè, domandiamo. Cioè, gli domandiamo, gli diamo una mano L'altro articolo è scomparso. Nuovamente. Quello che finalmente leggiamo adesso per fare il type set per... Ma che rivista? Sì, ma che rivista? Anche buona, è buona, cioè una buona rivista. Ma Asme ah, rischia quello là? No, no, questa è Journal of cioè, International Journal of Mechanics, no? Journal of comunque asce, asce asma, è molto buona però è scomparso nuovamente ho fatto anche un controllo sul, sul loro sito diciamo sul, dove abbiamo sottomesso il suo lavoro e dice che è in, in scrittura però non si sa che c'è finito Ah, vedi, però quando se ne vanno poi intorno ti fanno guardare un sacco di tanti. Per esempio qua questo programmino per calcolare la... 
Eh, però se la trust line, se, cioè se tu ci applichi l'assigliano, bisogna che fa quella cosa lì, quel procedimento iterativo. Sì, guarda un po' se c'è. Non ho letto cosa ha scritto. Cioè, però... però guarda, se ti detto, se pensa alla cosa della tesi di laurea, l'ha scritto in modo molto chiaro. E poi fa tutti questi cose. Qui, tipo, che ne so, per le aree, porta geometriche, eh, fa il programmino che gli fa... Mm. Carino, Guarda un po' se c'è sta il rete roba di cosa tipo se più a piccole body, vediamo se c'è che lei faceva queste cose pure lei quando tanti anni fa piccole body io assigliano dai Sì, sì, allora. Oddio. <ride> no. Oh sì, però lei, oh, così te te lei quando era bambina, perché mo c'ha 80 anni. Hanno lasciato la <ride> Beh, è andata in pensione almeno una decina d'anni fa. Non hanno aggiornato, eh, sono tipo... Non so, per come Facebook, per Facebook questo non, non si muore, per Facebook è morto, è pieno di morti. <ride> L'eternità in eh, formato sì, digitale. Sì, sì. Nel senso che loro ti chiedono pure se vuoi dare a qualcuno le cose, no? Non do a posto. Che tu do a posto, no? <ride> Non te do niente, te do. Però effettivamente ho pensato, vabbè, ma quello ti dà l'immortalità, ma che ti frega? Cioè, nel senso sì, ma che si Che c'ha sul research gate, scusa, c'ha roba? C'è, c'è, ma possiamo mettere pure sul reso scritto la cosa del... A ah, Bladian! Ma mi ricordo sempre quando facevo la tesi, che stavo, mi stavo disperando, quando facevo il suo calcolo, perché siccome questo coso convergeva male, a un certo punto non riuscivo a... c'erano praticamente queste curve di pressione che facevano tutti i salti così, a un certo punto ho fatto un programmino che si aggiungeva e che praticamente interpolava, perché Salina faceva così, <ride> e, faceva... Così, <ride> e mi tirava fuori quello. Che poi mi sembrava, mi sembrava una cosa tremenda, mi sembrava un trucco, no? Invece, perché in realtà se la cosa non converge oscilla, che lo devi fare regolarizzare, non è che falsavi il risultato, però tu immagini anche il stato d'animo, stavo io che facevo. Io comunque dovevo tirare fuori il risultato perché altrimenti non me laureavo. E poi mi si è accorta che invece erano cose veramente fatte proprio bene. Poi l'avevo proprio inventata, ce l'avevo fatta ex novo, capito? Ma era proprio... Dai ragazzi, però... Uh. Siete? Allora... Let us continue. Allora, questi qui sono dei modelli, abbiamo detto, modelli semplificati, eh, simplified models, eh, macromechanical models and uh, finite element models in which uh, we uh, 
for, we, we, if we, we show, show the criticism of a linear elastic solution. Then we uh, mentioned the macro element models, it's a simplified models for uh, uh, professional practice. And now I want to show you what uh, in the literature are called micromechanical models. And uh, micromechanical models are, uh, we can consider micromechanical models, uh, the models in which we represent uh, separately the bricks, the stones, the rigid element, and uh, the interface. And the interfaces can be that are, can be mortar interfaces, but also dry interfaces, in which uh, the behavior is considered non-linear. So these are some analyses that we performed in the laboratory of uh, structural uh, the department of structural engineering and uh, we now are trying uh, to reproduce uh, this analysis uh, and uh, you can uh, i can uh, introduce uh, you our phd students at this uh, bledian nela and uh, Bledian, do, do you have some picture to sh in which to show the tilting table? We have the uh, numerical model and the drawings, the shop drawings. The ones also in the, the ones also in the presentation of Friday. Uh, could you share your screen just to show which is the tilting table? Yes. Uh, we consider it a tilting table. Now it's not uh, really visible, uh, but uh, in the scheme you can uh, uh, imagine how it's made. It's a table that uh, rigidly can rotate. And uh, up on this table, uh, we put a measuring wall. And the aim was to find the collapse mechanism. So if you consider the self weight of the wall and incline the wall, consider the two components of the force, one directed as the vertical line of the wall and the other one directed as the horizontal line. And the angle will represent the collapse coefficient as I showed you before. So the, the, the inclination of this table uh, allow us to identify the so-called collapse mechanism. And uh, now we are trying to build a new table and uh, maybe we are able to do this uh, in the next months. And then uh, when we, uh, when we uh, start with the atelier uh, that follows this course, uh, you can uh, participate to this analysis uh, and uh, uh, follow the evolution of the collapse for the uh, walls that we want to to build, and uh, let me let us show to the to the students uh, the project of this table. Yes, for sure. And I can uh, also share a video of uh, one research group that already assembled one one table, which is quite short. Okay, Brava. Uh, yeah. You can see the screen. So this is the table. It 
has this uh, structural grid of steel elements and then there it has these pins on this side where we we pull the table at certain degrees so the table will go at a certain <inaudible> Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, yes, we, we can see. Okay. And then the table gets uh, pulled up to a certain angle and uh, until collapse. That angle of collapse will give us the collapse multiplier because a portion of the dead load will be inclined and uh, it's exactly as putting a horizontal load on the, on the tested specimen. And here is also another numerical model of the structure that we did. It's a finite yeah. element of the table. A yeah. finite element model of the table. And uh, in the next uh, months, uh, we will uh, construct this table and uh, put it uh, in our laboratory that is uh, in the Agramsh. You can see it here, for example. Sorry? Yes, of course. If we are able to, to construct it uh, in a uh, short time, uh, you can uh, visit uh, and uh, you can assist to the uh, analysis. And I think as the atelier, we continue in the next. Uh, you are from Erasmus on the Sander Falls. Standard. Because the students of the standard course uh, can follow the atelier that follows this course. And uh, on March, uh, of course, we are able, I think that we uh, will be able to, to perform some analysis. Questa cos'è? This is the table that uh, a research group from Minio built. Yes, but I initially wrote the email to you. Bye bye. Please continue. As you can see, you can you pull the table up and you this map is the table. The table. The table was an original idea of my professor that the name is uh, Antonino Giuffre. He uh, imported this idea from Mexico in a uh, conference. Uh, he went uh, a month and a few years ago. And then uh, he constructed uh, this table in our laboratory. And these are the first analysis uh, in which uh, we had the possibility to show that the collapse in a wall strongly depend on the size and the texture of the, the, the bricks. This was uh, what's made of uh, uh, st stone, was a porous stone, two fascia stone, and I will show you the results. This is the TT table. Okay, and this is the collapse mechanism. Here's the multiplier as the angle. And the angle represents the collapse load. And the collapse load. This reproduces seismic action, statically reproduces the seismic action. Fermato? Eh? Ok, thanks, Bledion. So, this was our fitting table, and this is uh, the models that we used uh, to reproduce. Uh, 
the physical uh, samples. And on the left side, you can see a wall in which the level of interlocking is very high. And uh, what is interesting to uh, observe is that in that case, the collapse uh, is governed by sliding. And the kind of uh, stones that we used was two fascious stones in which the coefficient of friction, that is the, the tangent of the angle of friction, uh, was 0 0.6, about 0 0.6, 30 degrees of uh, friction angle. And you can see that the collapse load corresponds to the uh, friction angle, the friction coefficient. And the collapse is per slide. Otherwise, in the right side of the slide, you can see a different arrangement of bricks with the lower level of interlocking. And in that case, you can see that the collapse load, that is the angle of the table, is 0 0.55. Uh, that is uh, lower with respect to the friction angle and the other uh, collapse uh, coefficient. And uh, the collapse depends on the mutual rotations of the bricks. So if the interlocking is high, there is light before rotates. While if the level of interlocking is not so high, they rotate and the collapse is by local rotations. And this show the strong dependence of the collapse behavior from the size and the texture, of course, of the bricks. And uh, the models that you can find in the, uh, at the, the bottom part of this slide are model made of rigid blocks and uh, non-linear elastic interfaces and the interfaces can uh, the, 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 the failure of the model is uh, concentrated along the joints the blocks are represented as read as in the reality because the interfaces are deformable while the blocks are essentially of a high resistance and then can be represented by rigid elements. These are the same analysis made of uh, uh, wall of different uh, uh, size, uh, different uh, height. And so you can see the same. Also in this case, we have sliding in the case uh, of uh, high level of interlocking and rotation in the other case. Finally, this is uh, a more sophisticated uh, case of modeling, but I want to just to show you that this exists. Of course, I thought especially Uh, we don't uh, will be able to adopt these models, but in the literature are uh, uh, widely adopted, and in particular, this is uh, one of uh, the most uh, important uh, uh, field of my research, own research. But uh, the idea is to use a continuum model a continuum model which preserves the memory of the size of the bricks and of the textures. And uh, this continuum model is a model uh, that is enriched by degrees of freedom with respect to the classical Cauchy model. And this is called the micropolar or Cosserat model with additional degrees of freedom as rotation of the points. 
and uh, uh, that uh, uh, also accounts for the anisotropy of the material. And uh, what is interesting uh, to observe is that if the wall is uh, uh, represented by a micro model, so each element uh, is represented as rigid and each interface is described separately, this is a discrete model, micro model. A continuum model, that is a continuum model discretized by finite elements, if uh, is of this enriched kind, uh, that, uh, that is a uh, coserat model, can reproduce exactly the behavior of the discrete model. And uh, I just uh, want to show you that these are some results of the continuum model in which we could represent the uh, behavior, exper experimental behavior found using uh, this uh, tilting uh, table. In our continuum model, a so-called homogenization procedure is adopted. That means the material is firstly described as a heterogeneous medium with blocks, interfaces, and so on. And using some equivalence criteria, criteria like, for instance, energetic equivalence criteria, it was possible to identify a continuum model with uh, additional degrees of freedom, like a uh, Coserat model, and uh, reproduce the results. What is uh, worth to observe is uh, only that uh, in the case of this enriched continuum, that is uh, micropolar continuum, Coserat continuum, uh, it is possible to preserve memory of the size while the classical continuum that you studied in the theory of elasticity, the Cauchy continuum, cannot account, cannot account for the size of the elements, cannot preserve memory of the size. And uh, for instance, uh, this is a solution. In the vertical axis, I represented uh, the energy of the, of the model. And the horizontal, horizontal axis, uh, this is a scale ratio. That is the ratio between the length of a brick with respect to the length of the panel. And uh, the solution, the yellow line, represents the Cauchy solution. That is uh, uh, constant with respect to the variation of the scale ratio. So the size of the bricks does not affect the solution of a Cauchy model. While both in the micro model, the discrete model, and in the Coserat model, we can find that the solution depends on the size. And this is a very important uh, feature. Uh, moreover, the nonlinear constitutive uh, uh, behavior is uh, included uh, in the formulation and we consider for the joints the possibility to open and rotate with respect to one on another uh, edge and the sliding. So we will be able to, to represent, we, 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 we was able to represent the behavior of uh, measure in uh, with a good level of uh, approximation, as I, I showed to you before. Finally, and this is uh, the topic of our interest, among micromechanical models, I want to include some models that are uh, based on the use of the plasticity theory. I will show you some uh, basics of this theory. 
and uh, in particular is uh, perfect plasticity theory, which leads to the so-called uh, collapse analysis, limit analysis. And uh, we will be able to use uh, limit analysis approach as showed in these slides to detect the collapse mechanisms and collapse loads for some simple uh, two-dimensional structures. In this kind of approach, we cannot uh, consider the internal stresses uh, and uh, no uncertainty are uh, um, uh, affect the results because uh, we don't uh, consider the deformability of the elements. We only consider if present the friction at the interfaces, but the blocks are rigid and interact among each other through interfaces that can open and slide. And these are some solutions that are obtained by your colleagues, also using our in-house code that is very simple to use for one, the ones who are interested in using. And these are the kind of models that are accounted for in the law. And uh, I want to report this slide just uh, to uh, remember that also the legislation now uh, consider the variability of approaches and doesn't suggest only one approach. This because of the level of uncertainty of the approaches uh, themselves. And then, as we said uh, last year, uh, last lesson, we have to select, uh, we don't have a general uh, model for measuring, so we have to detect the kind of measuring and select the model that is more suitable to represent this uh, uh, this structure and uh, never neglecting the results of the physical observation that is made using the survey and the solution must be as in the uh, framework of uh, standard restoration uh, theories must be uh, selected case by case. This is the key point. Case by case, we have to decide. We don't have general possibilities. And uh, thank you for your attention. I think that today we can stop uh, here and uh, we will meet uh, next week with uh, some other uh, uh, general information and then we will enter into some details of uh, simple calculations to apply to your case studies. And uh, meanwhile, uh, please select your case study as a next, uh, also starting from next week, you can uh, discuss uh, with Dr. Pingaro and uh, decide to focus attention on uh, your uh, case studies that you already analyzed in other courses. Because as I said before, it is very important to have historical information and any other information that uh, uh, can be used to, uh, to detect the state of uh, conservation of uh, a uh, 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 construction. So thank you for your attention. A casa non c'è nessuno. Ci siete? Oh, ci sono. Sì, siete. Sì. Bene, saluti. Goodbye.
Se hai delle domande. Va bene, Bledian, ci sentiamo. Va bene.